Hello, I'm MG and welcome to the second part of MLOps video series. For the first part, we had a quick high-level overview about Azure Machine Learning. And this time, we are going to have the same high-level walkthrough about what is Azure DevOps. Hello again, this is MG and welcome to Azure DevOps. So in the previous video, we saw that in high level, what is Azure Machine Learning? So we had a kind of introduction or a high level walkthrough about this service to again, just be familiar with the environment and capabilities again, just in high level. So we're going to have the same journey here in this video for Azure DevOps because this is going to be the main tool that we are going to use for our MLOps and it will certainly help us to understand this service in high level and some of the capabilities. Azure DevOps concept and topic can be very broad and I highly encourage you if you're interested you can go to Microsoft documentations there's so many tutorials and examples there that can help you to understand Azure DevOps better and be deep in and to see that how it can be utilized for your project or your organization. But just again, for simple high level quick information, you can just quickly Google our DevOps login and Azure DevOps login and put the URL there and you will see this page here. And you can just click on sign in and it will ask you to put your credentials and what you will see. If you have an organization, this is a kind of similar, similar page that you will see. If not, first it will ask you to name and create an organization. So I have created an organization and I have multiple projects in my organization. My organization called MG or Muhammad G. This is my organization name. And I have different projects here. I just created this one, which is an empty one called MG Testing Project. So I'm going to click on that. And let's say this is the place that we're going to do MLOps. And MG Testing is a project that kind of do some machine learning stuff. The great thing about Azure DevOps is not only you can leverage this tool, uh, as a place that you can have your version control. Let's say you have Git and now you can have Azure repos that I'm going to talk about to put the codes there, have your branches to pull request, uh, go from your dev to your dev to, to from feature branch to the dev branch to the master branch. And then you have your production or for you and have your end solution. But also Azure DevOps can be used for managing your project. And actually that's a part of DevOps lifecycle, right? Let's say you're doing Scrum, you're doing Agile. There are so many different project management methodologies. You can have them all. And if you come to the board, you can assign those tasks and a high level epics task features in a way that match with your project management uh, lifecycle and methodology that you have chosen. Let's say Scrum. And then here I can create a new work item and assign that work item to a person, to a developer, for a data scientist that, hey, for example, do that feature engineering or do that uh, de debugging that module or train a model. And then if this is something assigned to me, I saw that, well, these work items are assigned to MG. And then when I'm done with developing that solution, I have to put in a source control, let's say, for example, Git. But also here, which we're going to talk about something like Git I have called Azure Repos. Here I can have my files and, and use it as a version control, as a source for all those codes that you're developing and then do pull requests. Someone as a team lead, someone as a code owner or, or the DevOps team going to come and see my pull request. Well, it seems that MG did a great job because his code passed all the unit tests that I have defined. And if you see the test plans here, perfect i'm happy then i approve it will go to production and i will receive that email that hey your solution or it, the email can go to devops team that this module developed by mg is now in staging past the unit test or now it's in production or it failed right so again not only i can have this technical based development in devops but also i can manage my project using words i'm talking about going to staging production so what are these these are actually pipelines that are passing these solutions. Let's say I have a model I tested in my development environment. 
So I gotta train that complete model in staging and test it there and then put in the production. So I have to generate and then utilize these artifacts as artifacts, I mean, for example, here models, and then push that to the production and, and monitor that, right? So here's the place I can do. I can create the pipeline, a build pipeline to train the model, and then a release pipeline to use that trained model and put it in the staging or production, which we're going to actually do soon in the next videos. And again, define your task, the group we related to, the, to those tasks. Let's say if MG train a model or develop a code, who will be responsible automatically to get an email that, hey, there's a new development by MG, go there and check it, and if it's okay, approve it. So see how can I manage that life cycle? And now you're gonna have a better understanding that how we can put these capabilities for machine learning, which is a kind of development, right? And the desk plans, I talked about it. Artifacts, let's say you want to have your private package management repository you can have there, which can be a separate discussion. And you can also have more detailed settings for, for your projects. For example, who can approve my code? Who can approve MG's code? If, can someone approve his or own code or not? And how we merge those codes from different branches. So we have a master branch in our repo that all the main developed services are gonna be there and how we can approve the pull request to be merged to the branches. So these kind of topics and uh, content that I'm talking about are purely DevOps related. And again, the purpose here for this video is not about understanding all these concepts and terms that I'm using. It's just all about first, making our ears a little bit more familiar with these concepts. And also when we start to be hands-on, we wouldn't feel a stranger to this environment that we're using. And we don't have a zero information about what is repo, what is boards. Again, although we don't know yet the details of the services, but at least in high level, we know these main icons and we know that in one or two sentence, what they can do for us. So when we go to hands-on part of this MLOP series, we know that why I'm using this. And in that video, we're going to have a hands-on experience on these capabilities to help us to understand better. So I hope this intro was useful for you so far. Again, don't worry if you didn't get all of that. I know it can be a huge amount of information and just having that introduction and talking about DevOps in a couple of minutes or five, six minutes, it's certainly not enough. But again, just making a little bit more familiar with these services and capabilities. So stay tuned and the next video series when we will be hands-on to have our MLOps using Azure DevOps and Azure Machine Learning Studio, which we saw both of them, to have that end-to-end -end solution works, which will certainly help us to understand these concepts better. Thank you so much for watching now. Stay tuned. We're going to start the next video shortly. All right. I hope you enjoyed this very quick high-level overview about Azure DevOps. And for the next part, which is video number three, we are going to be a little bit more hands-on and start to play around with Azure DevOps and gradually create our own first pipeline. So stay tuned and we're gonna see each other for the third video.